Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Wednesday. Uh, today's going to be our last tool restoration video for the year of 2020. It was a heck of a year and uh, you know, I'm, I can't really say I'm too sad to see it go. I'm sure like a lot of you. So, uh, but I picked out two nice tools that I figured we would finish the year off with and uh, hopefully they'll come out really nice and they're tools I've done before in different episodes but these were extras I had and and uh, they are nice tools. One is a pretty rare tool and the other one is a not so rare tool, but uh, I think we're going to have some fun with them. And uh, then we also have a trip that I took to uh, Tractor Supply. A lot of people have never seen the hardware section of Tractor Supply. I had to pick up some hardware. So first, let's get to these tools, start them off and see what we got. Okay, going. like I said, to uh, close out the 2020, we're going to pick uh, two projects that we did already. But uh, these are new tools, different tools, and we're going to do them up a little bit differently. First of all, let's take them one at a time here. Uh, first, we're going to start with this uh, gripping stick. Now, uh, a good friend of mine, Bernie from Ohio, uh, sent this in. He was on the Helping Handyman uh, in the comments, and uh, Bernie sent a pair of these in. Uh, one of my first tools that somebody actually sent into the show, and Bernie was the first one, so... These are uh, very similar to the ones that he sent, uh, same kind, almost the same kind of condition. And uh, the problem with these uh, is that they're somewhat rare. So because they're somewhat rare, I don't do a over the top. Uh, I try and keep it to the, you know, that they still remain collectible. You know, I just do a cleanup on these. Whereas uh, this project here, this isn't rare and we'll go through this. So we're going to have fun with this. But this one here, we're just going to do a cleanup and I want to talk a little bit about it. I have a video that shows exactly how it works. Uh, basically, it's very much like the plier wrench. Uh, and with one improved feature that it will not pinch you in the bottom like the plier wrench sometimes did. But how you would operate this is you would put, when you open this up all the way, you could slide these drawers in and out. And, uh, and then you could make them into it. It would be a parallel pliers like you see. So you can move it out a little bit, give you a wider range, and move it in a little bit, give you a closer range. It had that little uh, notch cut in there for square stock, and just a beautiful pair. The way it's uh, set up, it's got that uh, three-way setup that you see it, it runs in the middle of the two. So we're not going to be taking this apart, but what we are going to do is clean it up nice, and then I'll show you how it works. Beautiful little uh, pair of plies. You don't see too often. Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation. You can see here we have a lot of that forging, pitting, scaling, or whatever all over the wrench. And, and I, I never liked that. We, the knurling came out nice on the handles, but uh, yeah, I was never much for that, that pitting. It looks, just looks terrible, you know. But this lettering, we have to keep that lettering. So it's there we are walking the line again. Same thing here. See that pitting over there on there? And. and and over here, we got that extent. That just bothers me. I always did, you know. And uh, but again, we're walking the line with this wrench. We can't go too too bad because it's a, it's a, it is a collectible. Okay, next up we have a tool that is neither rare nor desirable. It is probably the uh, most uncomfortable and non-ergonomic screwdriver ever made. Uh, it's just, it's horrible. But I've always found these fascinating. Fascinating that somebody would actually put this thing on the market. Um, we have did this a couple times before, but uh, because of we can have some fun with it. Look, we have some serious deep pitting here. See that? Oh, that's the worst type. Remember that? And it's bent, so we can get over to the dake. At least that's some fun. And uh, let's see what we can do with this one. And here we are at everybody's favorite, the dake. Let's take a look at the set. Now here's the setup. You can see how it's bent. You can see here it's bent, and it looks like we have to push down right about here somewhere. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I cut a notch in this piece of wood because this handle is like this. We'll lay that handle in here, put it over here, and then press that down with a piece of wood under this okay, end. Let's see what happens with this setup here. It should be uh, pretty much, oh, that's going nice and easy, huh? Let's see, I'm trying to look at it from your angle. We gotta go a little bit past it, raise it up, and see what we got. 
That usually doesn't happen. Look at that. Straight as an arrow first time. See that? You run down this aisle. Straight as an arrow. And uh, not bad, huh? First time. Okay, here's our post wire brush, and uh, we do this because this is going to be painted, so we'll take care of that now. Remember what these edges look like, you know, from, never like those edges. And, and remember here, this is a little mushroom on the top, you see that? And you see what this looks like here? Remember all these things, because this is what we're going to address. Uh, all these facets we want to keep, and of course we want to get out that pitting right there. That's That's rough, right? Okay, look at that. Yeesh. Now, while those tools are getting finished up, um, like I said, I'm a kind of a hardware junkie, and I had to go to Tractor Supply pick up some uh, washers, nuts, things like that. And if ever you need to pick up washers or nuts or anything like that, you can't go to the big box stores. They are absolutely a ripoff. And uh, Tractor Supply sells their uh, hardware by the pound. It's really pretty inexpensive. Let me show you some of the things I picked up, what I paid, and let me give you a quick tour down the hardware aisle of the Tractor Supply store. Now, I happened to look at my stocks the other day, and, and even though I do have a lot of hardware, I noticed I was running a little low, especially after looking at Reggie's uh Reggie's hoard of, of hardware Reggie on the road and I said you know what now I have to I have to build it up a little bit because I'm falling behind so uh at Tractor Supply they sell these by the pound now that's the way you really want to buy hardware in bulk or by the pound because you know it makes a big difference now uh over there it's like $2.99 a pound for the small hardware which is like this is uh, considered so everything you're looking at here cost me less than $15 and and I got, uh, you know, quite a bit. This quarter by 20 nuts, and, and there's quite a bit by here. I think you almost get almost 200 to the pound if you buy just them. Uh, these are 5 16 These are 3 8 here. And then the washers, you know, you see how many are in here. These are quarter-inch washers. And then you see over here, the second size up. They call these 5 16 but they'll, they'll go a little bit bigger. And then over here, uh, the slightly larger. These are the ones I use most of the time, so... I just pick these up because I have to fill up the jars and I always try and keep them separate. I got all different types. I got hard nuts, as you know, but that's the way to go. Track the supply. And let me show you how great it is when you walk through that aisle. Now, looking down the aisle here, you can see it's pretty much packed uh, floor to ceiling with all kinds of stuff. But can we just take a second to appreciate a well-lit, clean, well-stocked and well-organized hardware aisle because I'll tell you where I live in New York everything is thrown around mixed up you got the animals going through the bins and just leaving it everywhere so I just love this place now you can see here the hardware on the right this is sold by the pound and depending on what type of hardware fasteners, it depends on the price. Usually the hardware is about $2.99 a pound, but it goes on sale all the way down to $1.50 a pound. Now, there are, uh, as you can see, the bins here, and above it, there are plastic bags here. You see those plastic bags? So you take a bag, you, uh, you just grab handfuls of whatever you want, you stick it in the bag, you bring it up there, they weigh it, and they charge you. And... You know, you can see this is some of the hardware that I bought. I just love this place. Every time I go here, I, I just love this aisle, too. And uh, they also have the stock. You know, here's the aluminum section and, and also threaded rod and coupling nuts. And then on the other side, they have the regular steel. They even have, which is you don't see too often, they have a good sheet metal assortment of different types. But uh, always a good place to go. Track the supply if you can. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what these two tools look like before we started. And we are calling this project done. Let's take a look at these one at a time, see what we did. First off, let's start with this uh, grip and stick. Now, first of all, remember I was telling you why I don't like to do uh, tools that are, my hands are tied. See, with this, because it is a kind of a rare tool, my hands are tied. I had to keep this lettering on this one. And because of that, you see some of that pitting and stuff. I could not go any deeper because I'd lose the date. I would lose a lot of things. So my hands were tied. But 
I think uh, from, from my hands being taught, I think I was able to uh, to do a pretty decent job on the wrench and make it, uh, you know, a uh, really comfortable wrench in the hand, really nice. This is pre pretty much exactly what it would look like when it came from the factory new. Um, they came a polished steel. And you can see how this works now. This is a parallel plier, okay? So um, this is very much like, like I said, like the uh, plier wrench. The only difference is it's a lighter duty tool. And the second thing is, you see the handles here, they separate. The plier wrench did have a problem with certain operations that it could possibly pinch you where this doesn't do that. So this came out in 24. The plier wrench was uh, obviously invented before this, but it uses the same type of uh, leverage over here. You could see here it has that leverage because the pin is here and it uses a, uh, a little... Uh, arm here that grips the bottom of the jaw so you can see it at, it won't come out the jaw won't come out and that's fully open here so it, you can see the wide range that it has that's fully open over here and then you can move it down and each one of these uh levers that you move that's what this window is here for more or less it lets you see which gear tooth you're uh, engaging so very interesting tool was able to keep all the knurling and everything polished out the the backs here they were all you know, they, these are really, the forging on this was pretty horrible. But the steel is a really good steel. And uh, we're able to do a nice job on here. Remember the jaws were, you know, had the pock marks and everything. And uh, let me show you how this works as far as a parallel plier is supposed to work. The beauty of a parallel jaw plier is if we wanted to grip a nut or something, we have it set at this position here. And you see, if we put it on this nut here, you see that it grips the nut firmly on each side Plus, we have this handle nice and close. We get a good purchase on here. And you can see we get a really nice grip on there. Now, if we want to get the smaller nut here, we would just move it in one notch. And you can see using that window, we open this up, move it in one notch. And then this would give us a good grip on this one here. And you can see we have a nice grip on here on both sides, a parallel grip. It won't slip off. Uh, this feature here, these little notches, you can put, uh, you know, other things in there. Like even you, if you had to put an emergency tap in there, if you had to wiggle a tap or something to get out, it would fit in there. And uh, again, you could close it down. So these were, and, and it had a nice tip in the front, you see there, so you can get close to something. Beautiful pliers. Uh, I, I, I don't know why we don't see more of these around because they... You know, they really were a nicely made set of plies. That's why I bought these and uh, very happy with these. Now, next up, we have our Franken driver. Uh, I, you know something? I got to tell you, I, I have a, a couple of these and I say it every time I do it that, you know, this is the most unergonomic screwdriver ever. However, I'm fascinated by the lines. And, and, and you know what? I specifically did this to paint it. I was going to do it in the, uh, in the green, you know, the candy green, because a lot of people are saying they like that color. And I was going to, but then when I was taking this down, you know, it came up with this natural gray from the forging that just looks so nice next to the silver, you know, and I just couldn't, I don't know. I had to stop where it is. I couldn't do it. Look what we did for the, remember what that tip looked like before. And uh, look at that now, you know, everything's nicely done on here. Again, not a uh, mirror polish, but it kept all the facets here and just a beautiful screwdriver now as far as interest in looking at. Remember what the back looked like here? Remember the back was, uh, you know, dinged up and remember it was mushroomed. Look at that nice. And, and all these sides are polished now. So believe it or not, it's more comfortable in the hand now, but I still wouldn't want to use this. But I just, I, I love the look of it, especially with that wide front. And I, I think it's a very interesting screwdriver, right, to look at for some reason. I don't know why. And that's why I kept this, uh, whatever natural color that is in there. It's almost like a dark gray and uh, like a gun, it's gun metal gray is, is what it looks like. And I like it. So that's why I left okay, it Okay, like so in closing, uh, pretty happy with the way they came out today, huh? It was a good project to end the year with. And um, it's a it's kind of a short video because I'll be doing another video actually tomorrow for New Year's Eve. And that video is just a tribute to a friend of mine who passed. And we used to do our, our New Year's Eve lantern light off. So that's going to be a, a quick video for tomorrow. And then I'll have my regular Friday video. So we're pretty much packed for this week. And anyway, I hope you have a great night. Take care now. Bye-bye.